I'm Leslie Hairston and I'm running for re-election as 5th Ward Alderman. I'm proud of the job I've done since being elected Alderman. I believe my votes in the Chicago City Council reflect residents' wishes and even when I'm in the minority, your support gives me the confidence to speak up for the 5th Ward and the city at large. After a year of being without a major grocery store in South Shore, we're in talks with World Food Grocers about leasing the former Dominic space in Jeffrey Plaza. This would be a great addition to the community and would reboot our ongoing efforts to attract more businesses to the 5th Ward. As aldermen, we represent more than our respective wards, which is why I received an endorsement from Democracy for America. The organization called those of us in the Progressive Reform Caucus the Chicago 7. It's supporting the re-election of Progressive Caucus aldermen for rejecting the agenda of privatization, public school closings, and stagnant wages for working families. What is a progressive is being asked repeatedly during this campaign. Simply put, a progressive believes in progress for all. That's what guides me as alderman. That's why I support a $15 an hour minimum wage and voted for the mayor's ordinance to increase the current $8.25 to $10 in July and 50 cents every year until it reaches $13 in 2019. In the meantime, I'll continue to advocate for $15 because I know how important it is for working families who are struggling from paycheck to paycheck. Also, when people have more money, they spend more on goods and services, which help our local economy. When the ordinances for red light and speed cameras came before the city council, I voted no. I didn't believe then, and it's since been proven. They weren't about making drivers and children safer, but making more money for the city. I've taken a pledge to repeal red light cameras, which is happening in cities across the country. I'm the only Fifth Ward candidate to circulate petitions for an elected school board. While others say they support an elected school board, every candidate in this race had the opportunity to collect signatures to get the elected school board referendum on the ballot. During the debate to close neighborhood schools in mostly black and brown wards, I attended and testified at all 18 hearings in the 5th Ward. Along with community leaders, I was successful in delaying the closing of Cantor Middle School. I also worked with teachers in opposing the AUSL takeover of O'Keefe Elementary. For 43 years, my mother was a CPS teacher and principal, so I know the role neighborhood schools and teachers play in a community. It can make the difference between having a strong, cohesive community and destabilizing our city's most vulnerable communities even more through job losses, foreclosures, and the separation of friends and neighbors as they fan out to schools across the city. Since being elected, I meet regularly with Fifth Ward school principals. These meetings give me a sense of how the schools are doing and how I might be able to help. Recently, we held our second annual Best of the Fifth Ward survey and Bret Hart Elementary School was voted the most improved in the ward. Bret Hart also is the recipient of a $1 million gift from a local developer that included new playground equipment, construction of a car drop-off, so students can safely get in and out of cars without stopping or navigating through traffic, and additional parking. It's been these kinds of public-private partnerships that keep the fifth ward moving forward for residents. Currently, the former Southmore Bank at 67th and Stony Island is being redeveloped into a multi-use facility. For decades, the bank sat vacant. When completed, the building will house small nonprofits interested in the arts as well as the John H. Johnson Library, which is an 18,000 book collection donated by the magazine publisher's daughter. Artist and developer Theaster Gates also is responsible for rehabbing the former CHA Dante Harper townhomes into an $11 million community center and mixed income complex known as the Dorchester Art and Housing Collaborative. Artists and residents will work with parents, students, and the South Shore Academy of Fine Arts to create programming to engage young people. Public-private partnerships have played an integral role in the many accomplishments we've achieved in the Fifth Ward over the last decade. Without them, there wouldn't be a Starbucks on 71st Street or the Revere Housing Development in Greater Grand Crossing. On February 24, 2015, I need your vote to continue building on the work we've started in the Fifth Ward. We have a lot of projects that are close to completion, so I'm looking forward to working with you over the next four years. Thank you.